Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is Monday, the 27th of June, and so we come to, to be thankful to God for granting us grace to see another day and to seek more grace <laughs> to support us, sustain us through this day and of course through the week as well so let us pray as we start this new day <clears throat> O Lord open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise blessed are you sovereign God creator of all to you be glory and praise forever you founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives. And your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. <clears throat> the night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. All the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. On that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing God's praises, who has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy, you that dwell in Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> All the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. <coughs> All right, let's do the collect and then we move to the song. Lord, our God, as with all creation, we offer you the life of this new day. Give us grace to love and serve you to the praise of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> and our... 
our psalm this morning is psalm number 44 psalm 44 <laughs> Psalm 44, we have heard it with our ears, O God. Our ancestors have told us what you did in those days, in days long ago. With your hand, you drove out the nations and planted our ancestors. You crushed the peoples and made our ancestors flourish. It was not by their sword that they won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face, for you loved them. You are my king and my God, who decrees victories for Jacob. Through you we push back our enemies. Through your name we trample our foes. I put no trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory. But you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. In God we make our boast all day long. And we will praise your name forever. But now you have rejected and humbled us. You no longer go out with our armies. You made us retreat before the enemy and our adversaries have plundered us. You gave us up to be devoured like sheep and have scattered us among the nations. You sold your people for a pittance, gaining nothing for their sale. You have made us a reproach to our neighbors, the scorn and derision of those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations. The peoples shake their heads at us. I live in disgrace all day long, and my face is covered with shame. At the taunts of those who re reproach and revile me because of the enemy who is, who is bent on revenge. All this came upon us, though we had not forgotten you. We had not been false to your covenant. Our hearts had not turned back. Our feet had not strayed from your path. But you crushed us and made us a haunt for jackals. You covered us over with deep darkness. If we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to a foreign God, would not God have discovered it since he knows the secrets of the heart? Yet, for your sake, we face death all day long. <clears throat> we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Awake, Lord. Why do you sleep? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our misery and oppression? We are brought down to the dust. Our bodies cling to the ground. Rise up and help us. Rescue us because of your unfailing love. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I do love that last verse. Rescue us because of your unfailing love that word for unfailing love is the word covenant love because of the love that you have set upon us from before time began because of that love come to our help because lord you love us from before time you love us from the very beginning you have a special regard for us rescue us because of that love that you have for us um, don't rescue us because of us don't rescue us because of anything in us 
rescue us because of your love for us, because of what's in you. Um, let me read the meditation. I do love this psalm. You get the two sides, um, don't you? You get the, the first bit where he's saying, oh, you know, Lord, you've done all these wonderful things for us. You've always helped us. You've always rescued us. You've always come to our aid. And, and, and we've, we, it's, it's, it's been told long ago. Um, it's something that it's, it's, it's what our ancestors have told us. This is the kind of God you are. But now you have rejected us. Now we are going through a very difficult time. We are going through a hard time in our lives, in our nation. And, 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 and we, can't, we, we, we can't account for it. We, we, we don't, as far as we, are not, as far as we know, we haven't sinned. As far as we know, we haven't done anything bad. You know, sisters and brothers, that's an important point. Because sometimes when bad things happen, the first thing we want to think about is, that, is what bad have I done? That this, that to deserve this, what has me, you know, what, what, have I been unfaithful to your covenant? The psalmist here says, we have not been unfaithful. We have not turned against, turned towards false gods. But yet, yet our armies are being defeated. Uh, you know, we, we are, we are a laughing stock. Um, we are shame and disgrace to the nations around us and so forth. Why God have you rejected us? Um, and so, awake, Lord. Rouse yourself. Come to our aid. Help us. Um, a, so, the, the, you see that? Three, as it were, three sides to the psalm. You know, we, we remember your work. Now we are in this dire predicament. Come back to us, Lord. Come and help us. Awake and help us again. Um, isn't that the story of our lives? You, you remember what God has done, but now things are not so good. Come, Lord, and help us because of your unfailing love, that special love that you have for me. Come and be my help. <clears throat> this psalm is a song of corporate lament. Together, God's people cry out, wondering why God has left them in such apparent forsakenness. It is deeply bewildering to feel abandoned by God, but this is sometimes our experience. But note what the people also affirm. They agree that any favor they have received from God has been a gift. Past deliverance has been by sheer mercy. Verse 3. Not by our own sword did they win. Not by their own sword did they win the land. Nor did they, their own arm save them. But your right hand and your arm. This is the fundamental message of the Bible. Fallen men and women stand in need of a salvation that comes wholly from outside of them. They contribute nothing but their need. When God's people stand in need of fresh deliverance, therefore, this is all they can plead. Rise up, Lord. Come to help us. Redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love, your unfailing love. Centuries after this psalm was written, of course, God would show just how far he would go not not to forsake his people in jesus christ god drew near to sinners to assure them of his undying love if they would only lay down their arms and humble themselves enough to receive it when you find yourself feeling forsaken look to jesus and his great work of atonement of restoring us to god amen <clears throat> all right let's move to our New Testament reading. Our New Testament is, reading is from Luke. Luke um, chapter 13 from 1 to, 1, 1 to 9. Luke 13 verses 1 to 9. <clears throat> Luke 13. Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, 
Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you no. <clears throat> but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but he did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and I haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. All right, sisters and brothers, I'm, I'm looking at the time. I, I have a few minutes to look at this. It's one, it's one of those readings that is sometimes very difficult to understand. What is Jesus take, talking about here? Repent or perish is the title of the, 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 the NIV in, in the NIV. Now, of course... It's, it's an issue that affects all of us, I think. It's, it's a concern about what happens um, when innocents suffer. What is, what is, if you ever want to know what Jesus thinks about the suffering of innocent people, there, this is a glimpse of what Jesus thinks. Okay, so you have two scenarios. The first one is people who went to worship, they went to... They went to do their sacrifices in the temple and Pilate's soldiers came in and killed them all and, 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 and slaughtered them in the temple. And it, it says it, it, he mixed their blood with the sacrifices. It, in, the, 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 the blood of the sacrifice was mixed with the blood of the, the, the people who were offering sacrifice, the worshippers. Here are people worshipping God in the temple. And, and Pilate's, um, um, yeah, yeah, Pilate's men <clears throat> came in and slaughtered them. So that's one. And so, what, what, you know, the question is, what about these people? And Jesus said, do you think there were any worse sinners than the rest of us? The answer is no. Now, 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 now usually when you think about these things, you think, well, they must have done something bad. Why bad things happen? You know, we, we have this view that bad things happen to bad people. Good things happen to good people. A, the, the, even if you don't articulate it, it's in the back of our minds all the time. That, the, my goodness, for something that horrible to happen to that person, they must be a horrible person. Jesus says, no, there is no indication. And, there, and we must never draw the conclusion that because bad things are happening to people, it must mean that they have done something really bad while the bad things are happening. And Jesus said, no, I tell you, no. The second, the second story, these people were going along, eight or 18 of them. They were simply walking along the road, minding their own business, and the tower of Siloam fell on them and killed them. Again, you hear towers falling. A freak accident, you would say. But yet they died. They're just going along, minding their own business. <clears throat> and these things happen. You know, these things happen all the time. You know, there were those children. One day they went to school and a gunman came in and shoot, shoot up the school, killing nearly 20, some 20 of those children and their teachers. What have they done? Jesus said nothing. Do you think there were worse sinners than the rest of us? No, no. And we must never, ever um, draw the conclusion that because bad things are happening to people, it means that they must be really bad as well. No, absolutely not. So that's the very first point, sisters and brothers. We need to get that solidified in our consciousness because it's very easy for us to think because freak accidents happen or because terror acts of terror happen to some people it must be because they were bad or something they've done wrong or whatever no absolutely not 
Now, so, so Jesus says, so why? Why does this happen? Well, <clears throat> Jesus' answer is not the answer that we want. Jesus says, unless you repent, you too will all perish. Now, what is Jesus saying? You know, sisters and brothers, this, you know, this is where the Bible <clears throat> gets, go, goes very counterculture to our own thinking and the way of our minds and the way of our culture. Jesus says, unless you repent, you too will perish. In other words, think about it this way. Jesus is saying, you are worried about those things that happened to those people? The fact is, the, 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 the question should be asked, not, not why did those bad things happen to those people? But why did those things happen? Why didn't those things happen to me? Why am I spared? What good is in me that makes me any better than those people? Why did it happen to them and not to me? Jesus says the difference, sisters and brothers, is that we must live, we must live a life of repentance. Why must we live a life of repentance? Because at any moment we could walk down the street and a tower could fall on our heads. Gunmen could come and kill us. And so we must live a life of repentance so that when the time comes, when, when certain things happen to us, we know that we are safe. Our lives must be lives lived in in an attitude of repentance. The story of the fig tree. Here is a fig tree that is not bearing fruit. Meaning fruit of repentance. A life lived in repentance. And they says, cut it down, get rid of it. The man says, no, have pity on it. Have mercy on the tree. Give it another year. And let's help it let's give it some grace so that it will bear fruit sisters and brothers that is us that's where we are we are that fig tree many times unfruitful because we live our lives for ourselves and we do not give show signs of repentance and god every day is giving us more time more time to repent more time every day he's he's tilling the soil he's digging around it he is putting fertilizer at our root and he's saying go on you know sure give more grace more grace more grace so that we can live for him we can live true authentic godly lives for him but any day any day we can walk down the street and a tower fall on our heads or terrorists attack or Christians worshiping in their churches can be, can, can, can be attacked by terrorists. And the question is, when these things happen, have you so lived a life of repentance that it doesn't matter what happens to you? Because you're ready for whatever happens as you walk down the street. That is the answer, sisters and brothers, to our question about why towers fall the question is not why is it happening to them the question is why does it not happen to me why am i spared you know sometimes um there are people who who, who survive terrorist attack and they ask the question how come i survive and my friends are died died the answer is not because you were better than they. <laughs> the answer is not because you were somehow be you, you, they were somehow more, more evil. The answer, says Jesus, is an issue of repentance. The answer is, is, is that God spare you because he's giving you more time. He's digging around the root. He's giving you more time to repent. But one day, one day all of us will be cut down. All of us will be cut down. However we get cut down, we will, we will stop breathing in this life. And one day all of us 
our time will come, will be up. And the question, and there will be no more time for repentance. There will be no more tilling the soil, digging around the root. Sisters and brothers, there's a verse in Peter, I, I must stop, where Peter says, God is not slow concerning his promises, but he's, but he's giving us time to repent, to live a life of repentance. You know, some people say, why hasn't God done this? Why is he? The reason God hasn't done this or that yet is because he's gracious, he's merciful, and he's giving the tree more fertilizer, more, 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 more tender care so that it will bear fruit. It will, we will repent. But the day will come when towers will fall and things will happen and that would be the last and there will be no more time for repentance. So, live a life of repentance today. Yeah, mourn for those who tower fall on, but understand that you, it must be an opportunity for you to reflect on why it didn't fall on you. Why some people escape and some did not. It's because God has given us more time to repent. Let's pray. Oh God, we think about our world. We think about all the atrocities and the evils in our world. We think about the children who, who were killed by gunmen. We think about those young people who were killed or, or, or shot um, by a gunman in, 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 in Oslo last week. Uh, we think about natural disasters coming up on communities and, con uh, and, 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 and countries. We think about the earthquake in Afghanistan and so many other things. So many other towers falling, soldiers killing, um, people at worship. We think about those in northern Nigeria as they're worshiping. Terrorists come into their churches and kill them. Lord, we are thinking about all this. And we, we, we pray, we pray, O oh Lord, for an end to all these freak um, situations where people, innocent people as it were, are killed and destroyed because of the evils of others. But Lord, help us, as you've called us, to reflect not so much on what is happening to them, but on our own relationship with you. Why we are spared every day as we walk out our doors, as we walk, as we go about our daily lives. Why are we preserved and kept by your grace? That we may draw nearer to you. You're giving us time every day to turn in repentance and trust you. As the Lord, we pray that you grant us grace. Give grace to your people everywhere. So that we will grow more and more in your, in your knowledge, in your love. So that if we are ever in those situations where we are, where towers are falling. We pray that you will protect us, not just our lives for physical, mundane, bios life, but protect our Zoe, eternal and spiritual life in you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we, remember, we ask that God will protect us today, watch over us, whatever it is that we are doing today. We pray that the Lord will keep, will keep us safe, in his arms we pray for all those that are on our hearts today and may god give us grace today sisters and brothers to live for him today to be more like jesus in all of our doings today lord help us we pray that we will that we will live for you today more more and more today than we did yesterday lord in your mercy Hear our prayer. Be with those who are sick or those who are bereaved. Watch over them and help them to grow more and more in your comfort. Comfort those who are, who are, weak, who are bereaved and strengthen those who are weak, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. 
in this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and the fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, <coughs> Christ in mouth of friend and stranger, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you and give you his guide and protection today. May he fill you with his spirit that all you do will, be, will bring glory to his name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good day, sisters and brothers.